Hello, hello. We are on topic 7.6, Causes of World War II. We're going to be looking at the unstable peace after World War I and the Treaty of Versailles, the economic crisis brought on by the Great Depression, and then the rise to power of fascist and totalitarian regimes. Germany had been hit hard by the defeat in World War I, as well as all the conditions imposed upon them by the Treaty of Versailles. This led to a hyperinflation of goods by 1923 and the Great Depression. And what we would see happening is the blaming of certain groups of people for the problems that were happening in Germany, specifically foreigners, Jews, and socialists. Adolf Hitler was an Austrian-born German army veteran. He actually fought in World War I, and it was his temporary blinding due to a chemical bomb that would lead to him banning the use of all chemical weapons on the battlefield in World War II. After being denied admission to an art school, Hitler slowly rose in the political scene. He ended up becoming the leader of the National Socialist German Workers' Party, more commonly referred to as the Nazis and led them in an unsuccessful uprising in the city of Munich in 1924 called the Beer Hall Putsch. In 1925, while in prison, Hitler published Mein Kampf, or My Struggles, in which he laid forth his racial theories, his aspirations for the German nation, and his proposal to overcome all people he considered to be of the inferior races, and that included the Jews. When the Depression hit Germany, Nazis gained support from the unemployed and from property owners. And how they did this is they would set up lectures and events in which they promised people food, such as bread and hot soup, after people would listen to their lectures. So what we have, guys, are very hungry people who are in various states of poverty, and this is a large portion of German's population, and only one person or one party is promising them improvement, a light at the end of the tunnel. One person is building them up, and Hitler was a very charismatic speaker. This is going to allow him to eventually assume the post of chancellor in March of 1933. From there, he proceeded to assume dictatorial power, declaring himself Fuhrer of the Third Reich in August of 1934. The Nazis' economic and social policies were incredibly effective. Public works contracts, a military buildup, and a policy of encouraging women to leave the workplace to release jobs for men led to an economic boom, low unemployment, and a rising standard of living. This only increased the people's, well, not even just affection or approval of Hitler, but in the beginning, the, he was beloved by a large, large uh, portion of the German people. And I'm talking the majority of people adored him. And part of that connects back to the public speaking events he would host. People felt a connection to this man. Once he was able to do that, this is how he is able to input his policies, the program, the programs that were designed to target German Jews. We'll talk later on about how the Third Reich would become a genocidal state. It is prior to the outbreak of World War II that other European powers realized that Hitler was targeting different minorities based on religion, based on ethnicity, based on political affiliations. And one thing that Great Britain actually undertook was what's called the Kinder Transport. It's German for children's transport. It was an organized rescue effort that took place during the nine months prior to the outbreak of the Second World War. The UK took in nearly 10,000 predominantly Jewish children from Nazi Germany and Nazi-occupied Austria, Czechoslovakia, and Poland, as well as the free city of Danzig. The children were placed in British foster homes, hostels, schools, and farms, and tragically, Often, they were the only members of their family who survived the Holocaust. The program was supported, publicized, and encouraged by the British government. What's incredibly important to remember is that the British government waived all the visa immigration requirements, which was not within the ability of the British Jewish community to fulfill. The British government put no number limit on the program. It was only the start of World War II that brought this program to an end. And again, at this time, 10,000 children were brought to the UK. To pursue his goal of territorial conquest, Hitler built up his armed forces 
and tested the reactions of other powers by withdrawing from the League of Nations, introducing conscription, and establishing an air force, all in violation of the Treaty of Versailles. At the same time, Italy invaded Ethiopia in 1935. Hitler would send ground troops into the Rhineland in 1936. Hitler and Mussolini's actions met with no serious objections from France, Britain, or the U.S. Hitler was thus emboldened, and in 1938, he annexed Austria. He then demanded the German-speaking portions of Czechoslovakia, to which the leaders of France, Britain, and Italy agreed at the Munich Conference of September 1938. There were three causes for the weakness of these democracies, it's now called appeasement. Within these countries, there was a deep-seated fear of war. Nobody wanted to see World War I repeat itself. And especially within France, Britain, and in addition, the U.S., there was a fear of communism. And they feared communism more than they feared Germany. Finally, they believed that Hitler was an honorable man who could be trusted when he assured them at Munich that he had no further territorial demands. The belief was that because Hitler was the leader of a country, he would follow through on his word. After Munich, it was too late to stop Hitler short of war. March of 1939, Hitler's invasion of Czechoslovakia inspired France and Britain to ask the Soviets for help. What they didn't know was that Hitler and Stalin were already negotiating the Nazi-Soviet Pact, in which the two countries agreed to divide Poland between them. And in September of 1939, Adolf Hitler invaded Poland. <laughs> 